stop using keyword research tools. Yes, that's right. You heard me say it. Stop using keyword research tools. I know there is a ton of conflicting information about this out there, but I promise you, if you do a little extra work in a different way, it's going to be way, way easier than losing all that money and work that you put into those keyword research tools that don't end up even working. So doing your keyword research is single-handedly the most important thing that you can do for your niche site. Because if you don't do that, then you don't have anything. Unfortunately, I hate to tell you that people will not be able to find your website. You will not be able to get traffic. You will not be able to pass go and collect $200. Ultimately, you won't be able to get views and traffic to your website and you won't be able to get monetized, which is what we all want, right? We want a passive income. We might even want to replace our current income right now. Speaking of passive income, if you haven't checked out Project 24, check out the link below. It's an awesome course that's designed to help you from start to finish to make your blog or your YouTube channel and then ultimately make that passive income. I promise you it will be worth it. It's already helped hundreds of people around the world. Okay, so this video is not exactly about finding your niche, but first you do have to find your perfect niche. And the way you do that is you search in Google and you find those topics that people are searching for. I do have another video on this if you want to go check it out and I will be creating another one here in the near future. But this video is about finding topics to write about once you do find your niche for for your website. And I know I did a little bit about this in the previous video, but that was pretty general. In this video, I'm going to go into specifics about what we do here at Income School. So once you figure out what your niche is, you have to find topics that people are searching for, but don't have extremely high competition on Google. Once you find those, then you write your articles about those and match those specific search terms so that way you hopefully can rank on Google and you could hopefully be number one or even get the snippet in Google, which is that little uh, bar, that first bar that pops up on Google. When you are searching for something, it, you can see that bold paragraph. That is because Google has made that article a priority and actually gives it some significance and decided to put that article, that snippet right there so people can see it in plain sight when they do Google that search term. So in this video, I am going to explain exactly how I did my keyword research for Cook for Folks, my new blog, all about cooking for large groups, recipes, food, and more. If you don't already know, I am starting this blog from scratch and the Income School team and I figured out that this would be a good niche because of course we all know cooking is extremely competitive online. There's tons of people who have posted recipes and articles that are already ranking. If you Google any sort of recipe online, you're going to find what you're looking for. But the reason that this is a niche topic is because it's only geared toward one group, one type of cooking, basically. So cooking for large groups, there's a lot of things that you end up doing that are different than just cooking for your family or a small group, right? So first of all, when you're doing your keyword research, before ever searching anything on Google, put yourself in the shoes of the people who would be searching for those terms, right? It's all about them. It's not about you, unfortunately. I mean, if you don't have them coming to your website, then mm, I don't know. But you need to be extremely helpful to those around you. Hopefully you want to help people, right? You want to make a passive income and make money, but Hopefully you want to help people with this topic. So think about the things that the people who are searching for your niche topic, think about the things that they are Googling before you ever search in any sort of search engine, before you search in Google, before you use any of those tools, if you are going to use them, 
Think about the moments in the very beginning. What are the things that they are wondering? What are the things that they have questions about? What are some of the roadblocks they're gonna have or the issues or the problems? Again, you need to be that solution to them. You need to be helpful. Be a real human being. Okay, so cooking is an extremely competitive topic. Of course, we know that. But we thought cooking for a large group, that would be honed down enough that we would be able to find plenty of cracks on the internet, plenty of topics that we could write about. But we quickly realized when we started doing our keyword research that it is still extremely competitive. There were still articles being written about the things that we could write about. It doesn't mean that we couldn't write about those. If you do find that there isn't as much competition, you just need to write a better, more helpful article with original research. But we wanted to find like those golden nuggets in the internet, right? That we knew for sure, 100% that we can rank for number one on Google. So we spent at least four hours just sitting down and looking for keywords that people are searching for. And trust me, we had our highs and our lows, our ups and downs. We, you know, we got discouraged, we got encouraged, we got all of those things. So when you are doing this process, just kind of realize that those things are going to happen. Don't immediately give up just because you do kind of have a roadblock. You might end up finding a term and then you kind of get down a rabbit hole of a whole lot of terms just like that, which is exactly what happened to us. So I am going to start a screen record right now and show you the exact keywords that we are using. I'm literally gonna show you because I want to help you and I also want to show you that the strategy that Income School uses does work. If you do have any other questions about it, please give me a comment below, but let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at our spreadsheet that we have for our search terms for Cook for Folk. So if you look at these first few keywords, you could see things like best large pots for cooking for a crowd, best commercial mixer, recipes for large groups you can make ahead, cooking for large groups on a budget. Surprisingly, those are things that um, have cracks on the internet. And we got really excited after we saw these things. We were on a roll. But right after that, we got discouraged because we kind of just got stumped. I think we spent a good, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes or maybe even more just not finding any search terms. Um, until we stumbled upon some of these. So we got to this point where we started to find terms about catering. You see, how do caterers keep food warm? How do caterers transport food? How do caterers charge for events? So if you stumble on some sort of like obscure title or search term like this, keep going with it. So when you are cooking for a large group, some of the things that you're going to need is to keep the food warm, right? Or you're going to need to keep the food cold. You're just gonna need to keep that food from spoiling because it's gonna be out for several hours. So we Googled how to keep large amounts of food and you see it there you see how to keep large amounts of food warm and how to keep large quantities of food hot pretty similar search term right so then you see all these things and you see a couple articles here so you'll see one here um we go back here the best tips for keeping warm at your next party. Okay, there are articles on it. Look at these right here. This just gives you more ideas of uh, some search terms. How do you keep food warm without drying it out? How long can I keep food warm in the oven? How can I keep food warm for six hours? Google doesn't just give us this information for no reason. They do it for a reason because people are searching for this. So it's like, here, write an article about me. So how do we know if a search term is competitive? Well, you look at the other articles that have already been written about that search term. 
If a forum like Quora or Reddit is showing up as number one, then you probably have a really good chance because that's just a forum. It's not really even someone writing an article about it, answering the question. If you see an article that's fairly short about this topic, then you just need to write a longer, more detailed, better article with original research and there's a good chance that you could beat out that other article. Okay, so after a few of these search terms right here, we got to a spot where we got stuck. We were even wondering if this niche was a good idea for a blog or if we should like back out right now, but we kind of struck gold and our bread and butter here is these types of terms. How much sloppy Joe per person? 50, 20, 10, 150, 140, 12. These are each search terms. So we can write articles about each of these. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How much, how much, how much, how much? There's just limitless possibilities here. So that's where we started to get really, really excited. So as you can see, we got more than a hundred search terms and that's just our start. We're gonna continue to add more and more as we go along. And then over here we have our titles of these actual search phrases, where to place cake in the oven, which rack, which oven to place cake on. Why are Nutribullets so popular? Three reasons why Nutribullets are popular. So I can do another video about that, but for titles, for blogs, you wanna be pretty specific with those and actually answer the question within the title right away because that is how Google is figuring out how to place your article and all that. Another thing that I do wanna mention is about the recipes. So we know that cooking and recipes online are extremely competitive. So the recipes that I am doing are actually more for other articles that are going to link to the recipes. So we're doing like 10 recipes for large groups and we're gonna have 10 and we're gonna link to all of those recipes. So the carrot cake that I made, the French toast, all of that, that's going to be part of a list of recipes rather than we are not trying to rank for a recipe because that's gonna be so much harder. We're trying to rank for an actual article with those 10 recipes in it, and then they will link to each recipe, which is good for uh, the algorithm. Google will see that, that people are going to other pages on our website. So that's what we've got so far. If you do wanna go check it out, go to cookforfolks.com. Um, just keep in mind that we still need a banner image and some other colors and themes and more aesthetic type things, but you can go take a look at it. It is a work in progress. Comment below if you have any ideas of recipes that you want me to make and create for the blog. I would love to take a look at those. Also subscribe if you are new, it really helps me out. And like this video, please. And turn on those bell notifications to get notified when I go live or I publish new videos and I will see you in the next video. Oh, this is the big exciting thing around here in the office, <laughs> actually for me. I just got, and trust me, I am not an affiliate, I am not sponsored, but I just got one of these like pedal, I don't even know what to call it, a under desk elliptical? Pedal pusher, I don't know, cycle, under desk cycle, I don't know what to call it, but it's super cool. I can pedal while I'm working here. I just like to be active at work, and so this is a nice little addition for me.